now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Top of weather bulletin for November the 17th. Well, on day 321 of the year, so far we've had 87 storms form, and you can see on the map, no storms are active, adding to that total. And uh, areas of interest wise, we're not really looking at many formation chances over the next few days. That is certainly the case in the Atlantic Basin on day 169 of hurricane season. It's quite nice here. No systems active and the models are really not depicting much of anything. Of course, there is always that outside chance of uh, maybe a subtropical storm uh, in the far northern Atlantic that could be short-lived, uh, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. I have a fair confidence that now the Atlantic Basin season for 2021 might be over. The Eastern Pacific, it's a fairly similar story here on day 184 of hurricane season. Only about 15 days left in both the hurricane seasons, the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. Models are generally saying the same for the Eastern Pacific as they are in the Atlantic. In the Western Pacific, we uh, had an area of interest of here, of course, a few nights ago, but the models have uh, downtrended on that area of interest. Uh, but the system that they were depicting that could have become a tropical cyclone could still bring some rain to portions of Luzon and the Philippines as it continues moving west. You can see in the North Indian Ocean we have Invest 92B here, it's 0% the JTWC and IMD are both giving it no chance of formation. I mean, 93A is also active, very low chance, 10% at this time. The IMD is the only one giving a formation chance and that's low. As we, as we look across the Atlantic Basin, it's uh, fairly quiet here. We have a little low pressure system south of the Azores there. Uh, west of there, you see a large frontal system moving its way across the Atlantic, and you can see another frontal system making its way through the central United States. If we look towards the eastern Pacific and central Pacific, it's uh, fairly quiet here. Not much thunderstorm activity really at all in this picture. Main, mainly it's just some rain showers, so maybe over uh, ports of the northern Pacific, but out to sea. Maybe some just general thunderstorms that may be an issue if you're going on a boat through them, but most boats would likely go around those storms. If you go into the Western Pacific, you can see, again, just general thunderstorm activity. An interesting season that we've had this year. Um, I'm glad that we haven't had any uh, truly destructive storms, uh, say like what we had last year in Vietnam or Goni in the Philippines, but uh, we certainly had a a bit of an active season with uh, some Category 5s. Uh, thankfully, most of those stay out to sea. If we look at the North Indian Ocean, you can see the, th the thunderstorm activity with 92B is very minimal, which is understandable with it being 0% and 93A is looking decent. It's got some thunderstorm activity around it. This is a special floater that I've put up for uh, an area just south of Indonesia. You might have noticed on our tropical weather outlooks, uh, we had or our tropical weather bulletin last night as well. We had a 10% area of interest here. Um, the models have downtrended on that area of interest and we've dropped that for now, but we'll keep an eye on it um, as the models are depicting further development possible by day five. The sea surface temperatures across the Pacific are fairly warm, especially as you get towards Mexico. They're fairly warm. I uh, don't think the environmental conditions will be too great though for formation nonetheless. In the Atlantic Basin, it's fairly warm, cooling off near the coastline of the United States where those autumn fronts have come through, bringing us much cooler and more November-like weather, but it's still pretty warm. Still, that outside chance for a subtropical cyclone exists, but models really aren't saying much for that. Models aren't really saying much for tropical cyclones as well. In the North Indian Ocean, we can see it's fairly warm there, ready for 92N, 93A, 92B, and 93A, but the environmental conditions are just not going to be too favorable. The Western Pacific is warm as it has been all year. The question just remains are we actually going to see a storm form there? And in the Southern Hemisphere basins, we can see it's fairly warm, uh, ready for the, pet the potential tropical cyclones the models are depicting. The sea surface temperature anomalies, the Atlantic Basin is generally above average still. The Eastern Pacific and Central Pacific are now trending to be more below average. The Western Pacific is above average. The Indian Ocean, uh, Arabian Sea is actually getting more below average than not. Um, and if you can see the Southern Hemisphere basins where the tropical cyclones would form, fairly above average. If we go to the On This Day section provided by our Cyclone History page on Twitter, we're going back to 1999. 
the storm that lots of us may know from the nickname Wrong Way Lenny, as this storm became a Category 4. It was peaking on this day as a Category 4, and this storm is named Wrong Way Lenny, uh, or given that nickname, mainly because it tracked eastwards in the Caribbean rather than westwards. Uh, and looking at other on this days, I know in 2020, um, in UTC time, I believe it might have been Eastern time as well in the US, Hurricane Iota would make landfall in Nicaragua as a Category 4. Devastating storm that was just two weeks after Hurricane Ada. If we get to the naming list, we can see the Atlantic is still waiting on Adria. Don't worry, Atlantic, you don't have to get to Adria. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names are Vivian and Waldo. In the Central Pacific, I don't even have to say it, you know it's Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next two names here are Neato and Rai. The models really aren't depicting much of anything over the next five days, but we'll see if we get a new name there. And in the North Indian Ocean, very low chance we could see Jawad. After Jawad, it's Asanai. As we get to the Southern Hemisphere region, uh, names we can see in the Australian region, we're still waiting on Patty and Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, waiting for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in the South Pacific, we're waiting for Cody, followed by Dovi.